Thank you, everybody, for joining today for the webinar. We actually got a bit of interest in this one. We here, so we're going to record this right now and get started. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, if you guys see that poll that's come up, it might be helpful to uh, um, have uh, have that filled out and may spur discussions, uh, you know, going on here. And I, I will indicate throughout this webinar, this presentation here of the features before we even get to the demo is that we are the type of partner where we uh, are very interested in being interrupted. And, uh, you know, we understand that you come into these webinars with a goal in mind. So please stop us at any point if something's confusing or you want a clarification. I'll try to cover here the agenda, what, what we'll cover, um, obviously going over uh, what Jira Service Management means uh, as uh, an evolution of uh, Atlassian's ITSM ESM offering, uh, in, you know, from Jira Service Desk to Jira Service Management, um, is is really what the the charter of this webinar is, and there's a lot of interest in it uh, since the November 9th announcement. Um, but we'll we'll first cover about ourselves for about a minute or so. Um, we'll go over the summary of changes and features, you know, eight to ten minutes. Um, there's a pretty expansive FAQ that Atlassian has provided. Um, some of those things tread on, you know, merging instances. Some of those topics trend on when features will be rolled out. I'm sure there's probably a long tail of questions you all have. We'll bring up some of those FAQs. And uh, if you guys have other questions, something that's not covered in that, that's sort of a, a great time to bring it up. Um, we're gonna go after the Jira service management tiers, what standard and premium mean in enterprise, those different tiers as it relates to the features that have been added, particularly with Ops Genie. Uh, and uh, we'll go over very briefly cost and sort of cost strategy at Lasting is put forward. And at least you have some visualization of where your choices fit in terms of your hosting model. And then we're gonna do 20 or so minutes, 25 minutes of live demo. And really what we like to do is have uh, during that live demo, it's have it to be an open dialogue as well. So again, we would encourage at times if we pass a uh, part of the agent view or something you have a particular question about, um, hopefully it relates to, you know, relatively new features. Um, we can't presume that everybody who's attended is, is well-versed in Jira Service Desk historically on the agent side, but stop us and ask, and we all can always extend things out um, to, uh, to you know, cover even more, more topics. So uh, hosts, we actually have more hosts than, than we're showing here. Um, D Daniel, David, and Brian, and others from our team have joined, uh, and Natish as well. But uh, I'll call out Manohar, who's a co-founder and VP of engineering for us at Trundle here. So he's uh, really responsible for uh, running all of our, our engineering efforts that we do. And I'll, I'll cover what Trundle does uh, in general, but he, he's based out of Atlanta. I'll let Manohar go ahead and say hello. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Awesome. Uh, and I'm Patrick, CEO of Trundle. Um, I'm uh, mainly responsible for uh, driving the business and, and bringing new business for us. And um, um, so as an overview, Jira Service Desk, <clears throat> And we, we found that in the conversations we've been having, a lot of drive-bys at, at uh, conferences that we used to go to before COVID, we get a lot of you know, questions about you know, its comparison to ServiceNow, right, for example. And you know, Jira Service Desk has been ITIL compliant. Um, it uh, has features for incident problem change management, uh, built-in you know, workflows, um, but it's total robustness historically um, has had left a bit to be desired, at least in the manner of speaking of out of box capabilities or the reliance on uh, somewhat heavy configuration. Um, what Atlassian has done now has really ad advanced where your service desk can go and the enterprise level customers that it can do. You've seen, uh, or you probably have seen what, what Atlassian has announced uh, or what is announced on the pricing side and the features that are being launched and the evolution of Jira Service Desk into service management is commensurate with the added value that you're getting from the acquisitions they've had over the last couple of years. 
So particularly on the incident management side from its Ops Genie acquisition a couple of years ago, bringing into the native capabilities of Jira service management, the capabilities of Ops Genie and having an interconnectedness uh, really between um, and a single source of truth for uh, incidences and its uh, impact to services and to have that DevOps narrative a lot closer. So it really is all about vis visibility and proximity and responsiveness, responsiveness to incidences. On the agent side, on what is historically a Jira service desk you know, agent. So, um, you know, it, it lastly, and also with this announcement has brought in a lot of change management features, um, um, you know, richer context around changes to uh, uh, services you have, obviously those, those have a different approval process, review process, and impacts um, if you run service products. Um, and then there's other agent improvements, agent side improvements. Um, the, the newer acquisitions of Insight, which you know, is by Mindville uh, and Help, um, Insight being on the asset management side and Help being on the, uh, the, uh, the, the chat side, having being able to operate a lot of your services through uh, you know, your uh, ticket management through, through, chat, through uh, Slack and, and chat, um, those are going to be in upcoming releases. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what's new with your service management. You may have questions about what's coming. Um, so taking a step back, some folks don't know what Ops Genie is. That's totally fine. If you're thinking of Ops Genie, you may have pager duty, another incident management tool, but it, it's, a, it's a real game changer for Atlassian customers. Uh, it's been a standalone product with Atlassian. Now with this announcement, and things being rolled out into the cloud actively and with server and data center with um, release 412, I believe. Um, I have it in the future slide here, but Ops Genie is a robust alerting and on-call management tool. So think of how you have to treat a critical incident. It's a little bit different from every other ticket you may have. So you have a, a centralized alerting hub and you can control schedules and escalations uh, down to a level of granularity that may be required um, for any different type of instance you would have. It's a great monitoring tool. Um, there's hundreds of bi-directional bidirect integrations with other tools related to you know, other ITSM tools, uh, collaboration and chat and automation uh, and other monitoring tools of your network, right? Uh, or other services. Um, it's, it, you can integrate it with just about anything in terms of it being a, a listening and monitoring uh, solution. It provides a war room. It's great on-call scheduling and learning capabilities. Uh, there's a lot of if-then logic you can apply to uh, 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 you know, on-call tiers. If you can't reach this person, it'll go to this person. If their phone is on, is on silent, it'll go to you know, loud. Uh, you, you can do all that stuff. And it's really meant to be a single source of truth for all incidences. It has a, it bring, it's bringing this capability into Jira Service Desk that allows for a single source of truth, full auditability. And again, you're not jumping in between tools. It's all in one place. So on the right side here, specifically it, on, on the Jira Service Management side, with this integration with Ops Genie, you can escalate instances to a major incident. You can create a major incident in Ops Genie from an existing incident. You have the ability to link an incident in service, service management to, uh, to another. Um, it's included in the cloud plans. So we'll go into that into more detail, uh, but it, it'll be standalone uh, with server and data center uh, just for the time being. Um, and there's additional functionalities. Um, so, Apart from incident management, what are the other things that are changing with Jira service management? So there's other ITSM features, right? So we have ITSM templates. Um, we have a service registry, which is really important for change management and tying certain types of incidences or tickets to critical services and then knowing the, their further impact to customers and or teams that resolve those. Uh, you can do bulk ticket actions, which is a new thing. Um, and on the change management side, um, you can set up uh, group approvals to change, for change requests. You can integrate with Bitbucket and control deployments. So that kind of dovetails into deployment gating. Um, on the CI CD side, you have a lot more control and audibility and uh, in, uh, to know 
impact uh, to changes uh, to your, uh, your services. Um, and there's a lot more opportunities now for automation. Um, and uh, you can also do automatic uh, change record creations um, with the integration between Jira software and uh, Bitbucket. Um, some of the things that we'll, we'll be able to demonstrate today. So the FAQ, it's a bit of an eye chart. So I'm just gonna quickly run through some of these and this may inspire other questions that you have. You may have questions already uh, coming into this. So is Ops Genie going away now that it's included as part of Jira service management? So the answer is no, you can merge it or you can keep it as a standalone product. Uh, can I merge uh, Ops Genie and Jira service management if they're on different billing cycles? Yes, you can do that. And once you merge them, the billing will be turned off on the original instance. Um, will all current Jira Service Desk users get immediate access to Ops Genie features? So for the cloud, the answer is yes. Um, and you'll gain actually, I mean, this, what I talked about being commensurate with the price increases and the added value to customers, this is, this is part and parcel with, with having a cloud instance. Uh, for server and data center, so Jira Service Manager will be available. Uh, it's been available since 4.14, November 23rd but it does still require a separate purchase of Ops Genie. So it's not uh, native. Um, yeah, going down, uh, actually I'm gonna move up to the upper right here. So is the version of Ops Genie included in Jira service management, the same as the Ops Genie standalone product? So uh, I'll have another, I have another slide coming up that visualizes uh, visualize this a little bit better, but Jira service management's free Ops Genie is equivalent to Ops Genie free. Standard cloud is equivalent to Ops Genie Essential, Essentials. Premium cloud is equivalent to Ops Genie Enterprise. So other key differences are that Ops Genie does not include in the cloud incoming call routing, live chat support, and free stakeholder roles. Free, uh, the stakeholder roles may change in the future, by the way. I think there's a, uh, yeah, the last FAQ question does address that. And then extras though include major incident management uh, in free uh, versus none in standalone and services uh, in free and unlim unlimited SMS uh, alerts in standard. Um, what will happen with existing customers uh, who want to purchase Jira Service Management Cloud when it launches? So existing customers can either merge or consolidate if you're choosing to merge, you just select the right Jira Service Management Cloud Edition that's commensurate with what you need, uh, and then just proceed with the merge and there should be no data loss. Uh, and if you choose to do nothing, then Jira Service Management will not create an Ops Genie on the same site. Um, but you know, you'll have to, uh, you, uh, the incident management functionality will work, but the Jira Service Management license user will not be able to directly access the standalone Ops Genie. Are there any particular questions about transition that you guys may have at this point uh, or licensing that, that is, you feel is unanswered from some of the public documentation from Atlassian? Anything you guys wanna bring up on the long tail of questions that could come up from this or should we jump forward? Okay, cool. So yet another eye chart, but I tried to highlight some of the key differences on free versus standard versus premium versus enterprise here with your service management. Uh, right in the middle there, global and, and multi-project automation. So just like with your software, comparing standard and premium, there's a lot more automation you can do. Um, in down at the bottom, it, that is the IT operations side. So thinking of uh, really all about incident handling. So there's where you see the differences between the number of major incidences per month that you could handle 100 versus unlimited and standard versus premium. Incident creation, there's, there's some automation capabilities that you have uh, on the premium side and the number of post-mortems post that you could run uh, is unlimited on premium. And in, in addition to having command center and incident in investigations, uh, alerts uh, and analytics and heartbeat monitoring. And then on the service registry side with premium, you can get service subscriptions, ex um, external services and service and infrastructure um, health analysis. Um, is there anything that you guys want to cover or ask about? Um, some of these are also, you know, there's other things that are commensurate 
like uh, with uh, Jira software, like the storage side, there's a storage limitation on standard versus premium. Um, anything in particular you guys are grappling with? I know a, a good bunch of you are on standard right now. Is there, do any of these things represent a hard ceiling that you can't get through or any, any questions? Okay, awesome. On the cost side, um, so just did a, a very simple kind of total cost of ownership analysis over three years. So the uh, the cloud so the cloud product is the gray and the dark orange or deeper orange. So they, the cloud products actually bookend the costs in terms of the total cost of ownership. Now with the end of uh, <coughs> end of uh, sale announcement with uh, with server. Um, obviously that, that things changed beyond three years. Um, but if you were to look at it, cloud premium does offer you the highest number, uh, highest amount of features. Um, it is more expensive per on a per user basis. Um, and we tend to find that on the cloud standard size, it, it's really just a, it's usually a matter of size or complexity of the instance that you are, it, it becomes a fait accompli choosing cloud premium. So going from the dark orange up to the gray. Um, and uh, in the middle there, we also have the server and data center costs. Um, the bottom one is per, uh, per user, uh, per, sorry, per agent cost. Um, and then the, uh, the one on top is sort of a total average cost per year. Obviously, um, you know, the, the, uh, the second year and third year costs are a little bit different on uh, server versus uh, data center and cloud. So try to bake those in, try to think of where your teams fit. But obviously, depending on your hosting choice, there's a whole bunch of other implications and hidden carrying costs with it if you're self-hosted uh, versus going on cloud. So if you need any help with under, better understanding those things, um, perhaps even certain capabilities, um, you can always come and ask us. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, Insight and help are on a future uh, future track with Atlassian. Um, so uh, that's something we're not going to be covering today, but uh, you know uh, we're we're just excited for whenever that's going to occur with Atlassian um, because I think that's the the it's particularly on the Insight side and asset management is the kind of the last piece of the puzzle with really getting into um, uh, like for like ServiceNow comparisons. Um, we've had a few customers we've converted over from ServiceNow to Jira Service Desk. I'm not sure of service management, but um, that will be coming and hopefully we'll have a future webinar on that. So MG, uh, are you about ready for a demo, mate? Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, we can definitely take the next few minutes to uh, walk through the features and uh, some of the changes, the, the changes that are very evident when somebody logs into a new ideas and portal, and then we can go into some specifics on incident, ops genie, I touch base a little bit on a change and how that's been integrated with uh, with bucket and then we can open up our questions. Okay. Any questions right now from anybody? Go ahead and begin. Okay. All right, so you mate. Sounds good. Yeah, just a, a note of caution, since there are a lot of features, a lot of new um, updates that have been rolled out, we would be you know, we'll try to touch base on, um, you know, most important ones right now. And then we are going to have a follow-up webinars on very specific topics like incident and the change so that we can go into much more, um, you know, deeper configuration details on how these could be customized, configured, and, you know, linked with different tools uh, around, you know, each of these different title processes, okay? If you have any further deeper question, uh, Patrick looks like I'm not able to share the oh, screen. Let me fix that. Hold on. Okay. Hi, this is Philip. Um, I'm not familiar with the free stakeholder feature. Could you just briefly talk about that and some of the changes? Yes. Yeah, so in the meantime, IMG, unless you want to. Uh, do it, uh, cover it. So, um, you know, the Ops Genie stakeholder feature will remain. However, uh, Jira Service Management, you know, not be able to support the free stakeholder roles that exist in Ops Genie. So, as of right now, stakeholders will have to be licensed users of Jira Service Management. 
Um, so as, but that is, I believe from Atlassian that they're intending to change that once the identity solution um, becomes more advanced or robust. And gee, is there anything that you can add to that? <clears throat> That's what the visibility we have uh, for sure. Um, yeah, we, we would have to wait for further updates on that. But yeah, as Patrick mentioned, again, just to just to put it in a way like as subscribers, it's just like any other Jira role inside. You could you could probably consider it as um, uh, collaborators inside your JSD project. Like you know, that's that's uh, that's more equivalent. Uh, if I have to kind of draw some references with the other tools. So one of the classic example would be like, you know, there could be uh, hundreds of uh, your team members, both internal and external, who might be, you know, using a particular service or particular component of an application, and you are wanting to manage incidents, anything related to that particular subscription or that particular service, um, and and make sure that you know any updates, any incident updates that you want to push you could probably use this stakeholders list to kind of send out a single quick update to all of them corresponding to that particular service to put that particular incident. Um, I, I believe, you know, uh, if you, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the concept of collaborators inside service desk, like a non-licensed, um, you know, software team member who could probably contribute and get an update on- uh, Yeah, I think you can present now. Uh... MG, but I don't know, Phil, if you want to go one layer deeper on that question, just to help us out. MG, let me know if you can't present. Yeah, I'm trying to see just a second. Thank you. I got, uh, I, I understand the concept now. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, so I uh, should work now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm able to share the screen. Okay. Just up to, or right, let me know when everybody can see my screen. Yeah, we've got it. Awesome, sounds good. So uh, for the first five minutes, I'm going to quickly cover uh, the quick changes that you would see with the new ITSM template um, in contrast with the older service desk module that you might be using, or you know, if you haven't been using, just don't worry about it. Uh, but you know, with the very top section, you can see that there are service requests, incidents, and problem change specific labels along with the queues. Like, you know, the, the queues is the very first thing anybody would land when, when they log into a service desk project. And he, it is, the way we call it is a, um, a labeled queries or views. Like, you know, if you're somebody familiar with database, we just create a number of you know uh, different views and you know with, with different combinations you can create the labels so that your team uh, can kind of you know very quickly go ahead and find the tickets that could possibly you know meet a particular condition right you know that's uh, that's a simple concept you can always create a number of queues here irrespective of whether it's a service request incident or or a problem or a change it doesn't matter any different type of ticket that is part of this particular jira service management project can be added into one of these queues in here. So we, the most of the time, some of our customers use like kind of to bring or surface the high priority critical tickets to the top of the list so that they can quickly access those things. And um, you know, any any ticket that's kind of uh, getting close to their SLA breach or you know something that needs uh, you know higher attention whenever there is a uh, particular ticket being created with a high priority, usually we create um, those uh, those queries and then you know call them with a name that is very familiar with uh, you know for everybody across the team and then you can just create a number of queues here and you can manage your uh, columns that you want to see you can totally do that so that is something hasn't changed from the previous case uh, the the main change that you would see here is you know some of these labels that are added in here that's out of the box that means you know you don't have to again go ahead and specifically create um, you know a categorization or a queue to track all your service requests, right? You know, Atlassian is doing that for you. So whenever you create an ITSM template, it identifies, you know, whatever the service requests are a part of it. Um, and then, you know, it creates these queues for you guys and you can just start adding more queues if the, you know, the existing one doesn't cut your uh, requirements. And the concept is same here. Again, these are also named uh, labels. You can definitely write a query 
and make sure that you know it matches your requirements and then you can add it into the new queue and it should be available for your order service request as well. And it, it applies the same for incident, problem and change. But there is one stark difference here in the incident. This is where the deeper integration with Ops Genie comes into the picture. For the teams who have already been using Ops Genie, uh, you know, they, they might be already familiar with the level of integration that's available using the webhooks and the APIs and the, and the apps that, you know, uh, between the Jira and uh, Ops Genie. But they never had a home for themselves, right? You know, inside a Jira Services project. Like, you know, you would either have to add them as a standard incident or a standard support ticket or as an alert in Ops Genie or as an incident in Ops Genie. But whereas with the new JSM template, that integration has been taken to the next level. So all the major incidents have a placeholder out of the box in your new J JSM uh, template. So Adelation do identify that, you know, there could be a certain um, customers where, you know, the incidents get occurred, may all not need the same level of attention, may all not be qualified as a, as a major incident, right? So that is the reason why they clearly differentiated. There could be a system system incidents that you want to capture, you know, for your you know audit purpose, information purpose, or your for your you know kind of a housekeeping purpose. But once you identify a particular incident as a critical one, it's a major incident that would require a collaboration or a full ownership with a clear definition of incident management. That is when the ops genie comes into the picture. You can see if there is any ongoing um, you know major incidents that are there. You can see it here. Or you can kind of convert or kind of you know promote any incident that you that has been filed into JSM into an ops uh, ops genie based major incident as well. So th there's a difference, you know, anything that you promote into an ops genie from JSM or you create an incident inside uh, ops genie either by a system or by manual will show up here in the major incident category. So this is one big difference that you would see uh, with incident management when it comes down to the uh, labeling and the queues piece of it all right the problem is again the standard uh, it's 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 uh Atlassian gives you out of the box any problem ticket that you create will so it'll start showing up for you right here in the the problem queue change is also similar you could you know it comes with the default change tickets everything that comes up here it will show up here uh, but there is a further integration that's been built in here which is very very helpful for uh, especially for those uh, teams smaller teams or bigger teams who are uh, practicing the DevOps methods where, you know, they want, you know, closely operate and uh, they want to closely monitor any changes going in, make sure that there's no gaps between the dev teams and the ops teams. This is a huge, huge, um, you know, takeaway for the new uh, JSM template. All right. So we'll go into the specifics of it in a bit, but I just wanted to uh, pause here for a minute and take any questions um, with, the, with the new view that you guys are seeing here with the ITSM template. All right, sounds good. So I'll, I'll proceed further. Um, for, for folks who have been using JST, um, you know, this view is not something new, but there will be some differences that you're seeing here. This is a section that you never had in the legacy JST project, which has been added into the JSM template. So the moment you log in, you will see this by default. There's no configuration needed here. They are by default Ops Genie component that are part of the operations. You can see the services here. So this is another level of deeper integration that is coming out of the box. So any services that you create on Ops Genie will show up here. Any services that you create here inside JSM will sync automatically to your Ops Genie. Services are something that you can consider as, you know, um, an application or, you know, uh, I would say a stack of product or tools that being offered to your customer or being used internally, or, you know, you could even, consider like, you know, a concept of component as well. Anything that would probably be part of a, you know, that could kind of cause an incident or somebody would need a service to it, somebody's using it, or somebody needs to own, um, you know, that particular piece of software or a hardware, you know, you can just categorize it and create it that way. So this is something that we've already created. There are some of these are uh, external services that we subscribe to. There are something that we created internal as well. So the JST, JST demo service, this is just placeholder service, you know, which we are calling it as a, uh, in a service, just assuming that there could be a, some incident that could be reported against the service as well. So the, the concept is broader. You could pretty much leverage, uh, um, you know, when I get to the Ops Genie piece, I will just show you guys how to create an external uh, service as well. So that means, you know, you have some dependency, you know that 
you could you need to watch uh, for the uptime of that particular service. You can create that as well. The next piece is alerts and on calls. Before I go to the alert piece, I'll just quickly go to the on call. This is what Patrick has mentioned, right? So the, the integration with OpsGenie is bringing um, you know everybody to one place. Earlier, if you had an OpsGenie subscription, if you had a JST, you had to manage these things separately. And if you have to see an on call, you have to go to OpsGenie and then you know look at the on call. So what this would help is you know for any team that's operating, could quickly kind of you know. Um, get to the individual who is on call and be able to kind of, you know, really resolve some of the minor incidents as well, you know, if it's not being caught attention, right? And then you can also click through open and view an option and go to the option piece as well. So we'll we'll get to that piece in, in a bit. And then here you will see another um, label alerts. And then this is a kind of a, uh, a redirecting label. So it will just directly take you to option. So we are hoping that, you know, Atlassian is, is you know, as, as promised, a lot of integration already, and uh, we are looking forward to having alerts also show up just like the way, you know, we are seeing here in incidents, problems, and changes, you know, just bring them into this interface as well, which could be a cool feature so that, you know, you can work off of the same tool um, as well. All right. So that's with the uh, specific components that are coming with uh, Obsidian integration. Any questions here before we move forward with the rest? All right, so let's get to the incidents piece. So let's go to the incidents. I'll go ahead and click on all open incidents. So I already have some placeholder tickets here. These are some of the JSM tickets that were created inside JSM uh, using the standard uh, create feature, either through the portal or you could use uh, your standard, you know, backend view as well. Here, so you can use one of those incident. We have categorized report system problem as an incident in the backend. So you could create a ticket uh, using the ITSM webinar. Create this. Let's put it in here. You could you could customize your incident uh, intake form um, as well. Like you know, if you want to capture more uh, data points uh, at the start of an incident, it's totally fine. Uh, you could just, you know, add a whole level of uh, different um, form structure to this using uh, portal or in the back end, doesn't matter. So for us right now, everything is pretty uh, optional. So I'm not going to worry to kind of fill any of those things. I'm going to hit and create button here. So this creates an incident inside my JSM. Now, one of the things that you would see, we could have already triggered um, an uh, OpsGenie alert for this particular action that we just performed, right? So, but that could have required you to configure uh, the backend. You need, you, you should have been, you know, creating a webhook. You would have used APIs to, you know, let Obsidian know that you know something has happened. So that explicit configuration was required. But with this newer integration, that is not required. So you can see that the moment you created an incident on um, JSM, it gives us this nice little button here: create a major incident. This is a way to way for us to promote our um, JSM tickets, JSM incidents into a major incident inside of Gini. I'll just click create major incident button here. And then you can see this, the level of integration, um, you know, this particular screen is already reading from Ops Gini uh, to make sure that, you know, we are being presented with all the major incidents that are going on because it could possibly be that in a chaotic situation, sometimes there are numerous amount of tickets that could kind of quickly land in um, you know, IT teams queues and each different team member might be working on those tickets. And we don't want, um, you know, at the end of the day, any major incident to be duplicated. So it will present if there is any ongoing incident that is in there, it will show up here. Then, you know, if it is not something that um, is related to my JSM ticket, I'll go ahead and um, create another, promote this ticket in there. So I'll, I'll choose JSM demo service for now. This is one of the services I created in, um, of Genie, just you know, and put some ownership around it, right? So I'll just put and say, I did some webinar incident. I'll just put in description. I'll just select this informal and serve three, and then create a major incident. So this will this will trigger uh, um, an incident inside uh, Ops Genie, and you can see that it's automatically linked here. You know, it will show everything up here, so you can just click through, and it will take you to the 
Ops Genie as well, all right? So I'll just click through this. I'll take you to the Ops Genie. I'm gonna bring this guy back in here. All right, this one. All right, so let me go to this. Go for that looks. So this is the ticket that got created in here. I'll just click on this one right here and then I'll see a related incident. Then add uh, this, but let me quickly add in here. So the moment I create this uh, particular uh, incident, you can see that you know it, it, it does have, let me just go back and see, there must be a duplication here, okay. Yeah, it looks like there's a duplication here. So this is the ticket that we're going to see we'll go to the related incident. Yep. All right. So this is the Ops Genie screen. Uh, I just want to take a moment here just to uh, make sure that you know everybody are following the integration um, and how you could promote a JSM incident into a major incident instead of Ops Genie. All right, before I proceed, uh, David, do you want to add anything in particular uh, with regards to uh, kind of finding your alerts in Ops Genie and uh, going to a specific incident that is related to that particular alert? No, nothing in particular here. I think you, you touched on all the, the main integration points. Um, I'll, I'll chime in if anything else uh, comes up as we go through here. Sounds good. All right, so you can you can see here there are some details that are important for us, which we kind of captured when we kind of promoted it. You can see that CVIT has been captured in here. Uh, you know, the link ticket, this is the ITSM webinar incident ticket that we just pulled in here. So anytime you kind of quickly update your, your ticket, um, you know, it will automatically kind of update for us on Ops Genie as well. And you can build more further deeper integrations if you would like to, like, you know, depending on, based on your requirements, you could always kind of auto transition the tickets whenever you're kind of, you know, acknowledging your incident or moving an incident to the next level or closing it, you can auto close the uh, corresponding uh, JSM ticket as well, just to kind of, you know, keep you, uh, keep your teams in sync as well. All right. So here you can see, um, you know, you can, you can see that, you know, there are certain things that are critical here. So the reason why I selected JSM demo team, because I've already added a particular team to it. So you can see that this, this particular demo team uh, is responsible for anything that happens with JSM demo service, all right? So JSM demo service is directly linked to JSM demo team. That means, you know, there's a very clear definition. If something is happening, you can definitely, um, you don't have to kind of, you know, really worry about it. So then it's, it's been laid out. Uh, the template is there, the, the process has been set. So it's it's a smooth process, you know, you don't have to be in a situation where to identify individual who needs to kind of look into a outage that has been caused for a particular service. And then you can just add more, um, you know, individuals into this particular uh, team. You can pretty much kind of add all your Obsgeny, uh, you know, users into a single team and they can be part of a multiple teams as well. So you just, just go to, uh, this particular team and we can we will show you exactly you know how the configuration can be done on that particular team all right so let's quickly go to the jsm demo team and then we can just quickly show you guys this is a bare minimum configuration it's not a complex configuration it's a single user team but you could layer in a lot of configuration so the escalation is standard so whenever on call user um you know as you can see here is the roster this is what it follows it will look for the on call user if, if that particular user doesn't respond, then it just goes to the next user in the schedule. And if not, you know, we'll just do it. So you can kind of, you know, do a lot of uh, custom policies. You can create a lot of uh, layered policies in here. Some of our customers leverage this to the fullest and kind of, you know, um, take one step at a time to kind of, you know, make sure that the entire team is aware of it if nobody is really looking at it, right? So you can create the schedules. You can create a number of rotations and then you can just kind of pick and choose which rotation you would like to, uh, and then you can associate with a, a particular team as well. So I'm not going to go into the uh, other aspects of the Ops Genie uh, as of today. There are so many other things that you could do. 
there are certain limitations with uh, Obgini that comes with JSM license versus the standalone Obgini. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know Patrick did talk about uh, touch base briefly on the different levels um, as well. But there are certain things like heartbeats and a certain level of uh, uh, configurations are not part of the default DSM. It could be slightly different. This is our um, you know, production of Shini. So you can see all uh, every service that is available on Shini is available here. But yeah, just be cautious about the options that you're seeing here. Um, we will anyways, you know, have another webinar specific to, you know, uh, more focused on incident. That's when we can talk deeper with the um, Shini options as well, all right? So, Yep, here you can see that uh, uh, I was able to show that, you know, the JSM demo service that we added that was kind of showing up on our um, JSM project is already available here. So you can you can definitely tie tie such uh, services to a particular teams and you can just, you know, manage it on both the sides as well. Right, so let me quickly go back to the, um, the incident that we just showing and then I'll go ahead and quickly close this. Is all this one right here? The moment I resolve this particular incident, you will you will see that there is one change that you will see here at the top. So I'm going to refresh this page, and here you can see that the postmortem piece kind of you know showing up for us because you know uh, I did make sure that you know all my incidents should go through a postmortem, right? So I'll just go ahead and create postmortem here. This will pull up and screen for me. Then if you want to add more information to this, you can totally do this. And if you want to add additional, if you want to link any software pro software related issues, typically, you know, these could be, uh, you know, the, the stories that could have caused uh, these things, you know, the changes that got into the re recent releases, you know, could possibly be your uh, linked issues or, you know, you can create something new as well as here. And then once I go ahead and publish this particular one here, it just gets published and then I can just go ahead and you know export it into confluence. This is another level of integration between Obgenie to confluence so that you can have that full full circle. Like you know, you are starting with your Jira, Jira goes into Jira software, then it comes to Obgenie, then it goes back to confluence. So the 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 information flow is pretty pretty smooth so that you don't have to uh, kind of you know leave one tool uh, to kind of you know really achieve a particular uh, you know data transition there. So I'm gonna put this into my, one of the space in here. I'm not going to select anything and just say hit export. This kind of, you know, picks up a template automatically that's already available in Confluence. It will just create a draft for me there as well. So let's give it a few seconds and then yes, it published. I can just go ahead and then hit that particular link. It will take me to the Confluence where I've uploaded it. Then you can see that the template has been pre-built. You can add this information if you've seen that. All this information has been pulled in from there. If you have added any of information, show up. And the beauty of this is the timeline kind of you know comes up here as well. And uh, you know you can quickly do the postmodern and then you can just create a problem ticket based out of this incident if you want to kind of prevent this from happening further. All right. A any questions here? All right, um, so I'll just quickly switch back to uh, a change real quick here. Um, since we only have around 13 minutes, I'll just quickly show you guys something that we configured and we can probably look into it uh, in more detail later. All right, so the way we configure right now is that uh, our JSM project is linked to one of our Bitbucket services, uh, Bitbucket Cloud. Uh, and to a specific repository. So the repository we choose is CICD demo where we already configured uh, some level of deployment and a pipeline configuration for any code change that we are going to do. So that means whenever your development team kind of you know makes a change, like assume that this is the, the story using which uh, a change was published using a branch that was created in here. So if you are familiar with Jira software, not going to very specific details, but you can link your Jira service software projects with your Bitbucket repository, and then you can create a branch right from the story. So I've already created a branch in here. So this will quickly open up this window here. You can see that I've created a feature branch from this particular story, and then I've committed that particular code. I've made some changes in the backend, and then I committed that particular code. I created the pull request and I merged that into my master, and then I went ahead and, and you know kind of built it. Built the package state and I deployed it into my 
staging and as well as test. So this is entirely a Bitbucket pipeline concept. You know, we wouldn't want to go into it, but the level of integration is that the moment I kind of, um, you know, created a branch and committed the code and started deploying it, the new template has already created change request for me. You can see in here, these are, you know, two different changes, you know, uh, three different changes that I pushed uh, because of the, you know, the changes that I was making, it kind of captured those changes and then it created a corresponding change request for me. And then you can see that, you know, everything will be available right for in this, in the stage. And I go to one of the change requests in here. It shows the similar information for me. This was part of the deployment 26. And then environment was for the staging. That's where I deployed it. And the corresponding story that kind of deploys a code using this change is so-and-so ticket, right? So, so the moment you do this, uh, anytime a code change is happening, the teams that are going to support the further downstream post releases could be well notified of all those changes. So you can do a whole lot of a different configurations here. You can only push those change requests for a specific deployment type like you know for a production here this is a demo we want to capture all the you know changes that are happening at the every every you know deployment level so you can see that i'm just creating change requests for test and staging as well or you can just filter it out to your production and then you can track it here so once the incident happens then you know exactly uh, what service got affected and then you can go back and see what were the changes that were deployed for that services and then link corresponding story is a corresponding change to that incident. The moment you do that, the whole link, uh, the transparency kind of, you know, comes into the picture, you know, uh, that leads us to the, the code that got deployed, uh, the developer who deployed it, uh, when was it deployed, which release was it, everything is captured on the story so that you have a full visibility of, um, you know, the, the, the lead up to that particular incident, making it very easy for uh, teams that are you know working on incidents to identify individuals who are there. The moment the once you do that, since you already have everything in the tickets, um, you know you can go ahead and pull those individuals into a let me just go right here into a command center to resolve a particular issue. Right here you can just go ahead and hit incident command center. This will open up. You can create these war rooms. We have already created a, a one war room for uh, for customer. So we'll just open up, um, you know, a separate a chat come, um, a video conferencing, kind of the war room, and just go ahead and stop sharing. And I'll just enter the session. And it gives me what incident I'm working on, who is the team that is responding on it, who are the participants, you can you know, send an update. Here. Hey, bud, your mic went a little low there. I don't know if something happened with your Bluetooth. Okay. No, this is good now. Uh, it's about the same. All right, how about now? A little bit better, yeah. Okay, cool. No, I'm not using the, <laughs> the Bluetooth anymore. It's giving me trouble. Yeah, hey, you may have to just uh, speak a little louder, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I was just leaning a little bit back. Sorry about that. All right, so, you know, that's how you could just kind of, you know, the click of a button, you can gather all the correspond all the individuals who should be part of this, uh, you know, incident resolution, could be brought into the one single space, and then you can just, you know, resolve your issues as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go on. just go back to the change. I think we have about eight minutes. We can um, address any questions here. So that's the that's the high level uh, with regards to incident and the change um, that were evidently kind of bought into new ITSM template. Uh, we can just spend at least you know another one hour just talking about Obsgenie and all the features it would allow us to tackle incidents better uh, than the default JST. So uh, Minahar, it's David. One one feature I'll add that's pretty neat about uh, what you just demoed, which is that when you do when you use that command center, which is basically mm -hmm. your conference room for resolving the issue, all of that actually automatically gets re recorded and then is part of that incident permanently. And it also includes a link to that recording in the postmortem that you publish later on in Confluence. Yep. But all of that really helps with the the process of doing your analysis of how things went, what the timeline was, that type of thing. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's a it's a true incident management. Um, you know, it, it it pretty much the the integration got much more deeper uh, between the the source and the the actual action was just you know uh, having to do it in two different tools.
but still kind of you know the information is available on both in, both the platforms alike so is it ops genie that's providing the conferencing capability mm -hmm. that's right that's correct yep and can you substitute with other tools like slack or google meet google chat I'm not 100% sure about that. We can double check and let you know. Uh, David, are we using any other um, substitutes? Well, Opsgeny yeah. itself integrates with other chat tools, right? Correct, yeah. Exactly. So for for example, for creating the web meeting, I don't, I, I would, we would have to go back and look if you can you know, substitute the native one for like Slack or Zoom. Um, but to Patrick's point, there are separate integrations with tools like Slack, for example, we actually use for a few of our clients to pass it. So for example, if an alert comes in, we can send notifications about new alerts that come into a particular Slack channel. Um, or they can ask Slack, hey, who's on call right now based on a particular schedule? If you don't want to give people access to Ops Genie, but you do want them to be able to find out who's on call, they can use the Slack integration for that. So there's a there's kind of a whole other realm of um, integrations with those collaboration tools uh, but as far as uh, for using the war room, we'll, we'll have to go back and see if uh, you're able to update what the what the default is. But if you do take the war room function, I mean, you're you're sort of getting away from the single source of truth for incident handling, anyways, right? In theory, correct. If you start, yeah, if you start eating away at taking away from that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. I just quick, uh, I quickly looked it up. Uh, looks like a Zoom integration is already available. You can use Zoom for your incident command center instead of the default one. Yeah, it's 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 possible. Any other questions? So I'm familiar with uh, um, service desk from a prior life, um, and attended attending this webinar to find out whether there, what, what we could use in my new company to um, um, handle requests and, and incidents. Um, if we start off small, uh, most likely going the, the cloud route would be advised. And um, does that mean that Ops, the Ops Genie comes for free? I'll show you here what you get. Let's see if my... Tears. Hold on. Or I guess another way to ask the question is, if you're just starting off with Service Manager and want to do it with a small group, what do you? What does Trundle recommend? It may depend on what the, your your outcome. So, can you go a little bit deeper in what you want it to do and types of requests or incidences or things you? What, what, can you just share a little bit more about the situation? Um. So it's more um, uh, uh, focused on a DevOps organization and doing um, tracking requests for um, releases, software releases. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you could start up with cloud. It has all the capabilities to definitely track everything that you just mentioned. But I think it depends on you know volume as well, how much you would like to do. If you look at the uh, the chat that Patrick has just pulled up, um, there are certain numbers that are limiting you. Like you can only create hundred major incidents from JSM if you're on a standard. So if you think that that's that's going to be sufficient, I think we'll pretty much uh, do the job. So the question is the volume and the um, kind of features that you might probably need because that DevOps realm is, is such a broad stroke and uh, it's it's hard to generalize. But I think you know to start with the cloud JSM standard would would yeah. do for you guys, and then you can expand from there on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on particulars with the tool, care service management in general, the tiers or um, 
hosting model or anything a little bit outside of this topic in itself, meaning not just new features, but standard questions you may have about your service management? Okay. All right. So you all get about 45 seconds back. Um, thanks everybody for joining. Really appreciate Minohar going through and setting up that demo. Uh, we're gonna send out these slides and uh, the recording to everybody who registered for this uh, in addition to those who had joined. So I appreciate all of you who have joined. And um, if there's any questions that you didn't want to say publicly, but you may have want to send individually, we're, we're always available. Um, so please, please write us. And thank you so much and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. Thank, thank you. you, same to you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.